What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be with Genfinity, interviewing a multitude of projects across Web3. Today, I am very excited to be interviewing and having the opportunity to interview Brainstems AI co-founder and CTO Omar. Uh, this is coming out of the Nexera ecosystem. Uh, that being said, let's get the ball rolling here. Well, we certainly appreciate you joining us today, Omar. I know that everybody's so busy in this space. Uh, I always like to start these out with a little bit of an introduction. So if you can tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what brought you into Web3 and what led you into co-founding um, and being the CTO within Brainstems, that'd be great. All right. All right. Well, first, first, thank you for having me uh, here and, and sharing about what we are doing. Uh, my journey into Web3 started around 2016. I've been in software development since um, all my life. Uh, it's 20 years now, I think. <laughs> it sounds like a lot. Um, but yeah, I ran into blockchain, Bitcoin, and, and everything around crypto back then in 2016. Um, a little bit, you know, luck and also looking for um being different or or providing some different kind of services from from the software development side of things um and the lucky part was that we started working with blockstream people you know those guys that are uh, you know having some bitcoin on the space and and sending the bitcoin network through satellites um and we did some very interesting projects with them so that was kind of the way of getting into into the blockchain and and, and crypto field um, since then, I've been involved personally and on company side, uh, in and out of blockchain protocols, you know, like being part of core protocols, um, making products on top of other, other protocols for other customers, um, participating on the marketing side. So I've been, I've been almost everywhere and, you know, in crypto, in crypto years, that's kind of, um, yeah, half, half life, <laughs> something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, but well, generally speaking, I'm a software engineer. I have a, a bachelor in computer science. Um, yeah, I know I've been coding a lot. Um, not so much lately, but right now, like going into the roots and, and, and working from the technical side of things, uh, with brain stems. That's awesome. Yeah. A bit of a renaissance, man, a little bit everywhere. And I feel like you, I feel like that's, I don't know. I feel like builders in this space, it is kind of par for the course where you hear about people having to have the ability to know a lot, know a, know a little bit about a lot of different things and be able to inject themselves into a bunch of different roles, especially as you're trying to, you know, be in the startup world and everything else. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a fascinating conversation because I'm always in interested at kind of the convergence of technology, the intersection of AI, you know, and blockchain and traditional business streams. So maybe before we get into the weeds, can you just give us a little bit of an overview about what Brainstem's AI is and what it represents? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the interesting part of Brainstem is that um, we are not coming from the technical side building, let's say. It's, uh, so it's it's instead of wow we would like to build something very cool from a technical standpoint and then figure out who might be using it um we are we found that there is a problem uh, among companies that is going to be growing over time more and more everybody knows about ai and um, right now you know grandma daddy er everybody and and companies are not uh, you know isolated from that um and they are also using AI and they are using AI to improve the processes, to make better decisions, to choose wisely, um, to you know run possible scenarios about everything, uh, building plans, whatever. Now, every, sing every single company is building those predictions based on what is the fuel, the new fuel, the new oil data. Um, and they do it in an isolated way. They are working with their own data, which means it's their own reality. And there is not a single business, whether it's small or big, um, that work in an isolated way. You know, um, to, to grab some of, some of our um, use cases and companies that we are working with, um, the food, first, food service industry 
um, you have a food manufacturer, you have a food broker sales, you have a food distributor, you have the, the restaurant, you have so many people and companies in between that all of them have their own data, their own prediction system. And guess what? They don't and they, they don't have the same predictions. So maybe tomato is going to go up because restaurant uh, will be needing that, but this distributor doesn't think the same way. So they don't pay attention to tomato. So let's not distribute tomato. You know, so and why that happens? Because they don't trust each other, they don't share data. In a in a perfect world, all those companies will put all their data in a single in a single bucket and train their systems, train their AI using that single, you know, and unique um, combined data. But they don't trust each other. They will never do that. Even though they are working together, they need to collaborate. They are still don't, they still don't trust each other. Um, so with Brainstem, we are solving that problem. We are allowing um, uh, companies to collaborate, to have the same um, unified and collaborative view you know, uh, in, a, in a way of saying the same predictions without exposing private data. So don't worry about your customers. They are safe. We don't expose your data. We just are allowing you and bringing you tools to create a common intelligence that will allow you all to build and make decisions within the same predictions. Because now I know from a distribution standpoint how things are going to be, from the restaurant standpoint how things are going to be, and so on, um, and and this is this is a huge problem. It's a huge problem, and that will cost a lot of money for a lot of people, company side especially. You know because well they 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 are they are isolated. They are completely isolated today. Yeah, it's interesting, and there's probably a lot of different routes that I could take this. Where um, you know I think of you know what's going on with AI and blockchain and distributed ledger and everything else. If you look at it from just a financial standpoint and the way that money moves, um, there's obviously like trap liquidity and there's delays and all this other stuff, but really you can take that same uh, thought process and take it to the data standpoint. Um, and you mentioned like these data silos that all of these uh, huge corporates and businesses have, and even uh, SMEs like small and medium enterprises, they all have the same issues. Like if you look at, I remember back when I was back in my project management days, we used to use these really just like archaic, like uh, ERP systems. So like enterprise resource planning and everything was manual input um, running like, you know, th these, you know, Microsoft projects, Excel sheets and all this stuff. And it's like, I guess the question that I have is what happens when, you know, everybody starts digitizing. What happens to the businesses that choose not to digitize? I mean, you probably know this best. What happens if um, if everybody's using collective intelligence to streamline business processes? What happens to the businesses that choose not to use collective intelligence to streamline business processes? They I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's a fair, it's a fair question, and I think it's it's. Um, I would say it's goes beyond you know the the ai and 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 it's it's about technology you know if, if you are a small a small business uh, and that that's part of my previous my former company uh you know you 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 know that they are missing a lot of action you know they need to understand more what happens with their business and 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 so on uh, but that that will in today's world that will come and I think that's a very good aspect we have on the brainstem side because it's not just for the big corporation, the big companies. It's also it's also to allow that small business, that mom and pop uh, producers, that will need to jump into this because you have a bunch of places that they are producing local products for the local restaurant. And they also need to be part of that intelligence. They also need to collaborate. It doesn't matter if they do it manually because you know uh, they they don't have the ERP system, but they will find ways to provide that intelligence. You know, you have mobile apps. You have so many simple channels today to help the the the, the, the small companies and uh, you know to to provide their data, to provide what they have. You know, in different ways. You know, so I said provide data, and it sounds like oh well. You are sharing data. Well, in some cases, we need to cover those scenarios because not everybody will be able to have a full computation node, you know, to extract and train locally with your information. So there is no uh, data exposure. 
there will be cases where they cannot handle that or they don't want to handle that. So they can, you know, they, they can leverage the network for part of that to happen, but they still need to provide some information. Who am I? What I'm producing? You know, what I'm doing? Uh, what's my production? You know, and, and all of that. And I think I think that more than ever, we, we are in a place where uh, the small ones can take full advantage uh of of the technologies you know it's every single day is uh it's cheaper easier you know it's uh, affordable everybody has a cell phone you know like everybody it's uh it's in, anywhere uh sometimes you don't have something else but you have you have your cell phone so and that's that's a place where you can even manage your entire company you know uh, if it is a small company so you can bring on that um to the to the brainstem uh the way we are working on the on the protocol side yeah, and you mentioned, um, so I'm curious from your guys' standpoint with Brainstems, uh, you know, you mentioned these businesses having the ability to come into these collaborative environments um, to leverage collective intelligence or to leverage collective intelligence without the need, without sacrificing privacy. How does that kind of all work together within Brainstems? How do you like protect um, the proprietary stuff that companies would want to protect, but also allow them to kind of have this? Well, not even a sandbox because it's not really a test bed, but an actual kind of platform that allows them to leverage, you know, collective intelligence. That's that's a great question. I mean, th there are there are three three main factors uh, that are a problem for companies being the most important one: privacy. That's something we solve through the decentralized federated learning process and algorithm we have. Um, uh, in a simple way, what you have is the initial training you know against a common model happens within the customer premise so there is no need for the data to get out of the customer premise you know we are going there we have full competition know that it's been run where the data is under the control of the company because it's not just about privacy it's also about compliance in many cases you cannot allow an external to get the data so the DFL process, what they what it does is, it will um, it will calculate, and this is a technical term, but we will start hearing these kind of things more and more. It calculates weighted vectors, you know, um, against a common model that we have and funding model that we have, and it does it, you know, in every single member of the brainstem, you know, if you and. Once that happens, it start aggregating that. It goes in a in an encrypted way. So even the weighted vectors that are numbers, they are tokens, they will go in an encrypted way. We are using homomorphic, full homomorphic encryption, which allows us to still calculate stuff. Um, you know, but if you if you grab them at any point, you know, you grab them in the middle, you will not be able to understand what ha what what is happening. You know, you cannot use them. Um, so that goes to the aggregation node. Then it gets all aggregated from all the different ads that are pushing and collaborating with the training, and then it goes back to every single member with limits. You know, because you want to ensure that a company cannot access the plan you know like uh, asking to the to, to the um, to the model to the prediction model you know tell me about what are the, com the 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 plans of my competitor you know so you you build limitation within those models you know so they are they are safe for everybody and and that's it that's the dfl part uh, that covers the privacy then you have um a, a governance issue you know like well i'm the biggest one in the room so i will be the one uh you know mandating what we are going to be doing well you know that's so that's something that we are covering because we are building a decentralized protocol where there is not a single uh and a central authority to govern you know and it's more about the actions you you do like it's not like you need to vote and stuff but if if you want to be part of this intelligent ecosystem you know if you want to be part of the brainstem um you can you can collaborate you can contribute and we the protocol itself is validating your collaboration collaboration means not only the amount of data but it's also the quality of data and also the impact that that data can provide once you train because you know you may have all your sales from everything and maybe that's not as impactful as a small amount of data that is very very special 
uh, you know. So there are, there are all those elements to ensure that, well, um, it's uh, balanced, it's uh, fair enough for all the members, you know, and that there is contribution from the different members. Um, and finally, there is a finance aspect because those these are processes that are not cheap. Um, the more sources of data you bring in, the more training expenses you will have, you know, and so we have, that's that's exactly why the tokens come into play, into play, because we need to upfront some costs. And it's also an interesting opportunity for what we call stewards uh, to support those, those, um, those brain stems. Um, so at the end, we are solving, you know, the governance aspect, the data privacy aspect and the financing aspect, um, you know, in a very, very, uh, interesting way i will say uh, but i'm I, I you know i'm part of this so i, <laughs> I cannot say other thing <laughs> yeah and the compliance aspect as you mentioned i mean a lot of people don't realize like I, what is a gdpr all the all the data privacy aspects that come into play and they're all different in every jurisdiction yeah. and there's yeah. you know all that stuff you been, you mentioned some interesting things i mean i always think of kind of some sidebar stuff to ask here based on just the way the conversation naturally goes uh, earlier on, you, you you know, you mentioned everybody, grandma to the youngest kid out there pretty much now knows what AI is. Um, AI has been around for decades, obviously, but as far as, and this was like the chat GPT moment, basically, right? Um, but not a lot of people think about, and, and this is where I find, you know, this conversation interesting. Not a lot of people talk about what goes into the inputs uh, with something like chat GPT so that it allows to kick out outputs based on questions that I ask. And are those outputs geared me, gearing me slowly over time to think a certain way or do a certain thing or whatever, which is why I think decentralization of AI and like you mentioned the um, the weighted vector aspect. So like the federated AI type thing is really kind of interesting because, you know, and also the, uh, the participatory economy where like you get into governance and it's like one wallet, one vote. And it's like, okay, well, there's all sorts of things you can get into there or let's do weighted wallets so whoever has more i think that model has been totally bastardized <laughs> crypto's done that but where it's like you've got vc firms inventing or in, investing massive amount of money into these protocols and the the protocol has a governance token the vc firm wants nothing to do with governance they just want to make money uh based on the, the protocol itself so it's like when you reinforce good actions or valuable data or all the other things that come along with that. And you base governance based on that participatory economy. It gets really interesting as far as it strengthens up the model itself, I'm assuming. Absolutely. And I, I, I know I ramble a lot, but I get excited kind of talking about this stuff. It's, it's just really cool. Um, maybe if you could touch base a little bit on uh, the relationship that you guys have with Nexera. And I know the partnership with Nuclei and the funders aspect and just broad strokes on what that relationship has represented for brainstems to be able to um get the business aspect that you guys are building kind of um running or, or you know how it's helped all right yeah absolutely absolutely uh well we, we started we started a partnership with nexera um because we as the interesting part or the challenging part i will say is we already have customers you know we are working with real companies that are in this need. Um, the problem we face and the problem we are solving is about scaling. Um, and the solution we found to scale, you know, involves the token, involves the processes that I was mentioning. And that also means, you know, getting to the Web3 space. What, regardless, I, I'm in Web3 since quite a long time, you know, um, the project itself and the platform we are building requires the web3 element to help scaling uh, the solution which is very interesting you know like where we found that using web3 we can solve this uh, yeah. we don't talk too much about it you know we don't it's not like so we are not looking for investment or looking for funding you know to then start looking around the solution and then see how it goes you know it's the opposite way so um but at the end, we are we are building a solution. Um, so we we decided we need a token. This is part of the solution for our token to work out. We 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 need to start building community. Web3 works with community, and also it makes sense because we need community to hold a token and collaborate and contribute to the brainstem protocol. 
Um, so we started a partnership with, with Nexera for having our pre-sale of the token, which by the way, went very well. Um, we sold out in seven minutes, 250K, um, which is, I think it's a record for them, uh, which tells us that there is there is interest, you know, and, and, and people really wants to understand and see more about what we are building, you know, and the uniqueness of the way of what we are doing. Um, and also it's about partnerships. It's about building networks. It's about collaborating. So we are we already have an established partnership with Nuclei because like I said at the beginning, data is the new oil. And it's not just about the company's data. There are other data that is needed to bring in. You know, like um, uh, we, we can think, well, uh, it's just about sales, you know, distribution, you know, finding the gaps and, and stuff like that. Yeah, but there are other things and, and we are allowing and we will be opening in the future um, to bring on data, to bring on models, you know, so it's um, it, it will allow more and more partnerships, more and more openness and connecting all those parts because it's great to have the best ever algorithm on the data science part or is almost it's awesome to have the hu a huge amount of data you know that very nice data you know but you need to put all that together and put it in front of some pain that you will solve so that's what we are trying to achieve here uh, one step at a time you know bring the right ingredients at the right time uh, but i'm uh, you know i'm convinced that Connecting all those dots are important. Nexera and and all the ecosystem be, behind it is is um, helping us on that. And you are working on other partnerships too. So has been great from 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 the beginning, you know. And and you know I enjoy because we share we have a shared vision on on what we are doing and what we are trying to solve and the way we are doing it. Yeah, you bring up an interesting point, um, and I feel like there has been a shift as far as like you know, blockchain distributed ledger, uh, we are seeing like actual use cases for actual problems that already exist that aren't just being invented. Because if you would, like, I remember looking four or five years ago, whenever we still see this a little bit like Lipton iced tea rebranded to Lipton blockchain. And it's like, uh, what, what's really going on here? Um, but now, you know, you, you know, using web three and using blockchain to scale, I think is really interesting from a client base that, you know, you guys already have. How do you kind of view the convergence of technology, you know, because AI certainly kind of over the past year has piqued a lot of people's interests. I know when we interviewed Matai from Nexera and obviously Nuclei, um, he mentioned that there was like 6,000 AI startups in 2024, which is like just a crazy number. Um, but how do you kind of, I mean, b being from the web three stance or being in the, you know, web three communities for a handful of years and obviously running your own business and having the AI aspects, how do you envision all of these different technologies starting to really kind of converge together? You guys are obviously doing it. So I'm curious how you guys look at it. Uh, you know, well, it's true. Probably there are more than, than, than those, that, that amount of companies, you know, it, it might be even more. Um, but the bad news is, um, that many of them will will fail and the, the same way blockchain blockchain fields uh, you know we saw so many so many ideas so many products you know network protocols and etc just to fail um and the main thing is you need this is a, a business rule i mean problem the problem is we can we can go for a long time conversation on on, on this topic but um you need to find or you need to be sure that you are solving a real problem because otherwise once the hype went out you know it's over um uh, your company is going to be over you know there, there is if you don't solve a problem if you are not making a difference um it, it, it won't it won't matter you know you, you will get funding you know because of the hype people will invest and stuff like that you know but 95 percent of those cases will fail if there is no uh pain solved behind it you know and we like it or not and i know blockchain people doesn't like it too much but the companies the business side of things you know what we call sometimes the corporations you know they make money they have problems they have real problems they are creating stuff you know so that's where we need to put our effort um to solve problems because i mean we have great technology we want to connect that we may we want to make it useful 
you know so it's um sometimes we take a lot of impulse you know and we uh, yeah not, not not sure how to express it but we we take too much time you know trying to see how we can not go to that place you know because everybody's evil and it's not like that there are so many good businesses you know there are so many people trying to build stuff solving real problems you know trying to make the world a better place so we need to support that you know trying to solve those those problems um so yeah i'm 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 good i'm getting you know into the rabbit hole but, uh, um yeah but it's it's something it's always there um so and that that comes that takes me to the it's not always about forcing the technology you know it's about understanding and and even though i'm cto you know like one will think now well, this guy will look for the best ever technology you know to solve a problem and let's you know let's use the latest model and stuff sometimes it's not about that sometimes it's about understanding the need understanding the pain and looking for the technology support that will solve that and you can go into stages you know like first stage you know let's let's solve this simple problem and you unlock a new level and then you start adding on top of that so yeah sometimes yeah. We, we we you know we we tell look maybe we are not using the best ever algorithm for machine learning stuff you know but what we do is to augment and and to uh, leverage and have and provide to the business better chances you know by x percentage it's way better than nothing yeah you know, so it's it's about that no, and it's interesting too. I mean, uh, historically, the best technology has not always won out. Other, you know, look at Betamax, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, and so and many uh, yeah. But, but uh, you know, but um, yeah. I mean, from your guys' standpoint, you obviously work within um, just kind of doing a little bit of digging, uh, food and beverage, uh, auto industry, obviously supply chain and logistics, things like that, right now. But um, can you touch base on some of those milestones that you've had with current clients and, you know, maybe where you feel um, you may have different industry verticals that you guys reach out into or just maybe walk us through that process of milestones that you guys have had with current clients and where you see it going in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, we, we started we started building first. We are building a protocol, so it's not up to us to work directly with customers, but we definitely need to understand the different processes you know if you have a, a a company that does data science you know and then you have um other companies that needs the data science we are in between providing the protocol for that to happen uh, you know in a in a good way to have that collective intelligence you know and and, and all of that um but that said we as we need to understand all the ends um for the protocol to work we need also to be involved into that process and we need to build an advantage so we have what we call the unfair advantage um, and we are starting on the food service industry because we have something very special you, you don't want to be just a marketplace or something like that because many times what happens is why i will be getting to the marketplace to provide something if there is no demand and the demand will say why i will go get there and try to find something if there is no you know there is nothing for me to buy um so we solve that cold start problem by having a unique piece of information that allows us to construct and to start building on top of it um with very insightful information i will say i don't want to to extend very much on it but you know it, i can tell you we have a, a very interesting model that tells uh, about um sales food demand in many places in the us um so that's that's something that's something unique that you can start building on top so immediately you have something that attracts the different companies uh because they also want to to to, to access that intelligence but I want them also to, you know, collaborate and contribute to that intelligence. Um, so, but at the beginning, we have something very interesting. That's why we started on a full service uh, segment. Um, but immediately what happens is the different companies that start um, getting to um, to the food service brainstem, um, they are connected to other companies, you know, and we have, we have um, it's called like network effect, you know, of each new members um, brings on 16 new members you know wow. you may have overlap so some of the 16 maybe they are from another segment so you have an organic way of the of, of building 
uh, the new dif the new different uh, brain stems and, and in industry segments. So that's why you see that there is hospitality, added beverage, uh, automotive, because it's uh, you know the growing effect, you know the network effect of the food and service. Uh, the food service brainstem that is bringing on those kind of companies that are very connected you know and that's when the magic starts to to to, to appear because uh so far what we have is all those companies working siloed um they will start working in a better way between each other but suddenly you will have connections between the different brainstems you will, you will have things happening you know and intelligence being extracted of things that you cannot you might not be imagining you know so at the first is solving small problems small problems that are i think it's 200 billion dollars by 2030 or something like that it's a crazy number um but once you get there you start making new stuff you start creating stuff because you are putting connections and that's why the brainstem name is very good you know because you start thinking about neurons you know you know you start thinking about connections between those neurons and the more connections you have you know the more smarter things and the more creative things start to happen you know so you can suddenly see i don't know whatever kind of promotion you can imagine between two companies that will never uh ever be connected otherwise you know stuff like that because they are from different industries you know um so yeah that's yeah, it's um, really it's really interesting it's uh, you, uh, you know even just painting a picture where you've got you know one one person leveraging you know a protocol and then it, it, it cascading down to 16 others and you can think about just like the firing off and within a brain obviously and the best products tend to market themselves you know at the end of the day so like um, I'm curious, like roadmap wise, where, where you guys are at right now, obviously, um, you know, onboarding into Web3 to, to allow you guys to scale. Um, but maybe tell us where you guys are at right now uh, and, you know, what the rest of 2024 and beyond looks like for you guys. Uh, and then yeah. uh, I'm a big fan of forward looking statements. Uh, so uh, it doesn't have to just be about brain stems, even though, you know, I would want to hear that portion as well. But just industry wide as a whole, I mean, what are your thoughts on the technology of distributed ledger and how everything converges and where everything's going to go? That's a lot. Right. I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember. Um, yeah, I, I mean, on, on the um, on the plant side right now, we are working on the protocol. Like I said, I'm trying to 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 put my brain in that way, you know, like not trying to solve all the problems at once, you know, but as we have customer in in the need of solving this problem, you know, I need to solve the most easiest one, you know, and building on top of that. So uh, and, and that's part of some of the discussions we are having and, and, and some of the things we are exposing to community, you know, it's like, well, I, I don't have um, validators, I don't have assets to be fingerprinted to be, you know, water market and etc. You know, I need to start understanding and the contribution and, and and where the data comes to play and all of that um, and i need smart contracts and then i will need nodes so we are building layer by layer right now we are about to uh, push our basic set of um, smart contracts for uh, handling the different assets with the, which is um, agents models data in general and that's about you know knowing who contributed to this model um, who is com where is this coming from? You know, what's the fingerprint of that? Because at some point we will have other model collaboration and models that are specifically being created um, for 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 brainstems. You know, um, that's that's on one side. That's um, I would say that's the protocol layer. On the other side, are, we are I mean, you, know, you guys are launched. So this, am I correct in assuming that eventually, you know, as you guys expand out, you're launching your own layer one, basically, right? Brainstems yeah. Be yeah, it sounds. Yeah, it says. Uh, yeah, we we are we are still thinking on 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 yeah the, the securing part because and this is my blockchain background. You know, like you want to be sure that you don't need to handle the security aspect of the blockchain network because you know how many how many how many protocols you can have. You know, like how many of them there they are going to be surviving. So sure. um, you know so. I try to concentrate that effort, you know, and on on handling on the right protocol on top of the right protocol that allows allow us to to do our business, you know, because um, on one side, you know, I have the training aspect, you know, and I can say, well, I would like to have the training aspect fully on chain. Well, maybe that's you know that's nice, but training model.
You froze uh, up on me, Omar. Right. Yeah. Am I back? Yeah. Hang on one second. I'll cut that portion. But yeah, um, you. I lost you at um, <laughs> training models on chain. No. <laughs> so All right. you want to take me from there? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, tra training models on chain, you know, it's something you, you would like to see, but, you know, blockchain are famous, you know, for being slow and not for being fast. So you might want to have part of that process uh, in a hybrid way, you know, like the compute power happens in the regular ways. And we have some partners, you know, going for decentralized compute, which is great, you know, and can, can you know, reduce that gap. Um, but, well, you need, you need to keep the rest working. Uh, and you don't want to be creating from scratch an entire uh, blockchain protocol. So yes, layer one sounds like um, like the way, and that's where we are heading. Um, and the other thing I was saying is this is this is the protocol layer. Then there is um, the application layer, and that's more towards companies, you know, and regular users that they don't want and they don't they don't need to know what happens under the hood. You know, you jump into your car, you you turn on your key. You, you hit on the gas, you know, and you drive. You know, you don't need to know that, well, there is a huge amount of AI algorithms behind it, you know, there is blockchain, world integration, crypto tokens, whatever. Um, so we are, and we will be very soon this week, um, uh, showing some of the Jedi uh, front end, which is more than just a UI, you know, it's a way of accessing and in interacting with the intelligence. So you can see that as how, the users will be able, and I mean by users, companies will be able to interact, you know, and how we are providing the different ingredients for the other side to verify what is happening because they are upfronting costs, they are supporting, you know, the stores, they are supporting and they will like to see on chain and being able to verify, you know, what, what is happening with this uh, activation, with this pathway, you know, what is going on here. Who, uh, is somebody using it or not? And on the other side, I want to make a very smooth process, you know, very easy for anybody to, to, to do it because, you know, I want to ask, you know, how can I improve my sales of this X product uh, on the next quarter, you know? And yeah. you don't, you, you want, you want part of that process to be verifiable, but I, I don't, I don't need that users to be, you know, uh, playing with crypto and stuff. So, um, we will be exposing that um, for for the community also to see uh, what is and how is our vision. And like I said, it's not just a user interface. Interface, it's a, a way of accessing it that includes um, interoperation, interoperability, you know, um, interpretation also, which is you know very very you know, broad concept. But um, companies use different names for you know their clients, in example. You know, so they, they, they are used to interact using that language. And, you know, it's not just about English, Spanish thing. It's about ensuring that you are understanding the correct way and you are translating to the different models the right way. And on the opposite side, when you are outputting, you know, results, you are talking the same language and every single member will have a different language. You know, um, another part of that is the, the identity service, you know, like um, the same way every company has their own language and their own, you know, words, um, they have their own uh, internal ways of identifying customers. So let's say on the food service, you are, um, you are restaurants, different companies will handle the, um, the reviews of that restaurant in different ways, internally speaking. You know, I, I'm going deep into the database, how they identify that. So imagine you are consolidating all the intelligence because you want to have an overall review of that restaurant, you know, and they talk all different different ways, you know. So you need to handle those process, which is part of the DFL. So all that is being accessed through an easy way, you know, and, and that's, it's I, I see it more as a framework because, well, today we may have, you know, one version of Jedi, but tomorrow we may have several version or or groups building their own interpretation layer, you know, putting their own funding models or building on top of other models. Yeah. And not only do uh, internal organizations name different clients, different things, but they name projects or initiatives uh, for each individual client differently. A lot of the times I remember that we had project numbers for every time a project would run through for one client. It's just, it, I'm going to yeah, have to, I know that we're running out of time. 
almost here. And I'm going to eventually have to talk to you about Star Wars because it sounds like that you're naming some of the protocol aspects Jedi, and I'm a huge Star Wars Jedi. Jedi. It's not Jedi. It's okay. Not, then, then, yeah, then, Jedi. Then it's not Star Wars. Um, but yeah, I mean, I Almost. would love, if you, <laughs> <laughs> I would love if you could give us just maybe a couple of forward looking statements, uh, industry as a whole, what are you excited about as far as distributed ledger blockchain? What are you excited about from brainstems? And, um, that'll lead us out here and hang out with me a couple minutes after I end the recording so that I can make sure it uploads, but, uh, forward looking statements industry wide or from brainstem standpoint, I would love to hear your thoughts. Well, I think, I think we have. Very exciting challenges ahead, you know, the industry in general. Um, challenges, um, like I said at the beginning, you know, like everything is going so fast uh, from from the AI hand, you know, it's 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 uh, it's even insane how fast things are going. And and you start thinking on different opportunities that that's going to bring, you know, but at the same time, it's, uh, well, what will happen with people, you know, like how fast people can go and, 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 and you know, been i don't know how to say it, but near to that process you know like well it's because it sounds like it's going to exceed us you know um and and i think that's that's something i believe we are making in a better way or we are helping to l simplify that gap you know from from a brainstorm standpoint because i think it's going to be huge i think the gap that we will see you know in 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 our civilization time is going to be immense you know things are going to go so fast you know and we are not you know we are we are just scratching the surface you know we are just scratching a little bit so um and that's where i think i always told that you know like uh, ai and blockchain will find a way to work together because ai somehow needs the blockchain and the mutability aspect to um kind of li limit and ensure that everything is going in a more democratic way, you know, in a more paced way and, and, and balanced way and fair way, you know. So I, I see I see that, you know, working very well together. It's not going to be easy. You know, we have a huge, huge challenges ahead of us. Um, but I, 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 I think we, we, we are going to be looking at exciting times, you know, in, in the near future from how technology and, and human connects, you know, like, uh, yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. Well, Omar, we certainly appreciate your time today. Again, uh, Brainstems AI and uh, the CTO uh, slash co-founder of Brainstems. We were super excited to have the opportunity to interview today, Omar. And we were definitely um, talking a little bit about the Cambrian explosion of all of this technology starting to uh, you know occur and how it's really going to affect us all in the near future. Omar, thank you so much. and looking forward to the next time we're able to do this together. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs>